All right, it is time to do my goals check-in reading reflection on 2018. The time has come. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to do what will probably be a rather long video um, looking back at my 2018 goals. I did set eight goals um, and I did do a goals video about them, although I did forget one of them to mention one of them. <laughs> So last year's video, I mentioned seven things, but there were definitely eight. And throughout the year, I talked about the eighth one. So I think that that's fine. So grab a cup of tea or a coffee or water and all that good stuff or just or not if that doesn't help or it doesn't help. All of those things help. <laughs> Depends on the person, no judgment. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to get right into it. And some of these I will do separate videos, wrapping them up or going into them a bit further, including my first one and my first goal, which was to complete reading all of the plays by Shakespeare, which I did. I read a play a month and ended up finishing all 38 plays. I am so excited about this one. This was definitely one of the biggest goals that I had, um, and it's a, a project that I had been working on since 2014, so it was four years, and it was the second or third attempt to do it, but I finally did it, and it feels really um, the next goal that I had was a less specific goal, and that was to get a little bit more articulate on what I thought about the books that I read. This is a less quantifiable goal because it's like, how do I know if I do this besides knowing if I feel like I did this? And I intentionally made some goals like this because how do you quantify that? <laughs> like, and, and I think one of the places you can go with this is I'm um, doing more reviews. Um, and I did actually do more reviews on Goodreads than I thought I did. I did sort of like 38, which is not a huge, like, percentage of the books that I read, um, but or the titles that I read, but it was more than I expected. I do, I, I still have a challenge with reviews on Goodreads. Who am I writing them for? Am I writing it for me? To remember what I thought about the book or am I writing it to other people for them to determine whether or not they want to read the book or am I reading it for other people who have already read the book who want to know what I thought about the book and I, I have not got past that so I did that was not my method but at least I determined that that's my stumbling block with Goodreads reviews I have my own spreadsheet and I do I could I don't think I did this for last year I do do it for many years I could put it in there, what I think about the books, but I think I was successful in the fact that I did sort of fall into the pattern of on my Friday Reads videos, I would choose one of the titles that I finished that week and talk about that particular title in more in depth. It's not what I thought would achieve this goal, but I think it's what helps me achieve that goal the most. So I think on those books that I spoke about more specifically in my Friday Reads videos, I think I did get more articulate about the books I read. Um, so at least those books. <laughs> um, I think another challenge and insight, actually another insight that I had throughout the year is that I realized with the volume of how much I am reading these days, it's just, it's not possible or I don't want to. <laughs> Which is the best way to phrase it. Um, it's not possible for me to write about each of those titles in depth. Um, and that's actually true. I feel like I should say that I could choose to read less and be more articulate about them, but that's actually not true. Like, I, ch I could choose to read less, but the time in which I read is not the time in which I reflect. So it doesn't necessarily equate being more insightful about the titles in which I read. So anyway, that's getting a little vague -ish. So I would say that, I don't know, I feel like I half achieved this goal, but I did achieve a lot around sort of understanding how this would be possible and approach that I could take and in the ways in which I was successful and that maybe I should be more specific and articulate about my goals. <laughs> but I think I did make progress both in the actuality of the item as well as learning about how I feel about it. So I think that's kind of like a win, kind of. Uh, uh, the other one was a bit more vague too, was to continue pro projects, my Shannon Reads Those Books project, my Sci-Fi Fantasy and Weird project, my TBR Unwrappings projects, and for this one, uh, and then I'm actually going to add into this one, my, uh, book to film, uh, reading book to film adaptations, and so I'm going to just very briefly go over these, hopefully briefly, um, and um, because I did read stuff for all of these, but most of them, I didn't necessarily read more 
Anyway, I'm already getting judge me about myself. So my those books project, I read seven titles for this. I read The Half-Blood Blues, Hound of the Baskervilles, Pride and Prejudice, The Shipping News, Death of a Salesman, and Madame Bovary. So I read six titles, and in previous years, I read seven, 17, six, and seven. So I didn't do great in terms of volume. I didn't actually enjoy all of these titles, um, but actually four out of the six I enjoyed. So I'm not sure what to do about my Those Books project. Initially, I was going to do reviews of each individual title. That I don't think is going to happen. Um, and I'm certainly not going to go back and review these individually. I might do one mass catch-up video and just talk about each of them briefly. Let me know if that would be interesting. Um, but I'm also feeling like feeling the need to review everything for a project is getting in my way of doing the project. And for projects that end up being multi-years, it's feeling very messy so I'm a little frustrated at that but did I hit the goal of continue the project yes did I continue it in the way in which I thought I would no did I continue it in the way in which I, th I wanted to no do I did I continue it in a way that felt good no but I did continue the project uh, getting even better when we continue the sci-fi fantasy and weird um exploration that I started in 2016 for last year, I read two books. I read the Cant A Canticle for Leibowitz, which I did not enjoy, and um, Howl's Moving Castle, which I thought was only okay. And those were the only two titles I read. In the year before, I had read 12 titles, and in the year that I started the project, I read 10 titles. Now, I think what happened here is I ended up spending a lot of um, excitement and energy in the BookTube SFF Awards, so a lot of my science fiction and fantasy reading was about new titles, as opposed to titles that were on a list that I created in 2016. So I think that's what happened. So, but also for me, I'm left with feeling like I didn't make progress on the goal I set. So it's feeling me not feeling great, but I did progress. I can't say I didn't progress on that one because I did. Um, and then for my TBR and wrappings project, this one I actually did a fair, I did the best, I think. Um, I did seven new unwrapping videos um, and I unwrapped 39 books and I tw read 26 books. In the previous year, I had unwrapped 23 books and read 14 books and only did four videos. That's a lot of numbers to throw out there, um, but I'll say that where I'm left off at is I have 17 books to read of the books that are currently unwrapped, um, and some of which I'm in the middle of, and I have now currently 132 wrapped books, and I started with 134. So I have bought a lot more books, and I have a lot of books that aren't yet wrapped. So I'm not sure exactly what the best approach is for this project, how the project is working for me. I love doing the unwrappings, but the big sticking point here is that I don't read only physical books and I don't only read my own physical books. So if I unwrap 10 books and read 10 books in a month, that'd be fine. Except for the fact that I use my library, I read things on Hoopla, I read things on Kindle, like I borrow books, I borrow books from the library. So there's a lot of ways in which I read. So I'm not sure what the best approach is um, for this, but I do still really enjoy doing the unwrappings and I love the surprise factor. And so I'm not sure what the best approach is going forward, but I did move forward on that one. Um, and I'm also going to include my book to film chat like thing because I do consider that a yearly project that I work on even though I don't always talk about it specifically. Um, but last year, and this really surprised me, I read nine book to film adaptations. Nine! And I thought I did horribly at this, So, but I'll get to where that is in a second. So I read Looking for Alaska. I don't think that's being adapted anymore, but it was on my list. <laughs> um, the House of the Clock and Its Walls, Mary Poppins. I read Ivanhoe in anticipation of Robin Hood. I read All the Bright Places. I read Brain on Fire. I read Sleeping Giants, which I don't know if it was being adapted when I read it. <laughs> I read Madame Bovary and I read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Now I think where I stumbled on this, oh, first up the stats. So I read nine books last year. The previous year I read 13, which is way more than I thought. And then in previous years, I had read seven, seven, three, and then I didn't go further back than that. This is sort of a project I semi work on, have been semi working on like a yearly thing that I've done since 2000, I think, and 10. So it's been quite a while. Um, and so for this also, I, um, I read nine books and I watched zero of their adaptations. So that's how I am feeling like it's been unsuccessful. I read the books, but I haven't seen any of the adaptations and lots of these are out. 
um, most in the theater, right? Mary Poppins just came out a couple weeks ago. Um, and But like Brain on Fire is on Netflix, Madame Bovary, there's a version that is on, um, I think on Canopy. Canopy, uh, Simon versus the Homo Sapiens, I think is available to rent now. So for me, I think the lead in time needs to be different because I think that I'm not anticipating being able to see stuff at theater, which is what I initially was aiming for when I started the project in 2010. So I think I need to change my expectations and my timelines there a little bit to feel like this feels like it's a success in the future. Wow, I've only gone through three of the goals and we're at 10 minutes. <laughs> Let's keep going. Hmm. Next up for my context experiment, this was this one was I think was a big fail. But again, there was a learning here. Um, and my context experiment was that I wanted to work with um, researching titles more before reading them to see if I could increase the chance of reading books that I enjoyed. I think this is associated with my Those Books project from the previous year. I ended up really not liking a lot of the books that I read. Um, and so my energy for the project was waning. Um, and so, but I ended up not doing this. I'm a spoiler-free fanatic. I just, I just really do not believe in spoilers. And I find, especially with classic novels, often the gist or the point or the theme or the big whatever is often very much very early in the Wikipedia thing. <laughs> And I, you know, I don't want to know what it is going into it, even if it means that I don't understand the book very well, I would really just rather try and figure it out on my own. So that context experiment not only did it happen, but I also realized that it wasn't going to happen because it was very much, much against the nature in which I like to read. So I think going forward, what would be better to do is to be more uh, lenient on myself if I want to DNF something. If And that means if I read the first page and I don't like it, I let it go or let it go for now or just totally let it go. Or if I get to two chapters in or halfway through or 98% in and I'm just not enjoying it or it's not bringing me something, it's not bringing me more knowledge in a genre or a time period of writing, I can let it go. So I think going forward, that might be the way to approach that um, if I decide to put it on next year's list, which probably isn't. But still, in terms of choosing and cultivating my own TBRs, I think it will be helpful. So fingers crossed I do it and fingers crossed it is helpful. So again, didn't, it's, it's a lose, but a win, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Next one, and I can say without question, sadly, this one is a huge fail. And that was continue my reading iconic works by women authors. And this just hurts my heart. Um, I have a couple of lists that I put together that I was like trying to work through. And I resisted and just did not go to this. And I did identify again. I identified what the challenge is here. There's a, there are a lot of books on these lists that I do want to read, but I find especially the really iconic works tend to be really hard reads. And that is not, there's only so much energy in my reading for those challenging reads. Um, and then it often goes to other things like my Those Books Project or reading Canadian novels. Those are both higher like, um, you know, a lot higher learning capacity on while I'm reading. And so, yeah, I just felt like when I was looking at a lot of the titles a lot and a lot of the books, there's so much that is about um, being disempowered and like the challenge of and hopefully overcoming. Um, but a lot of them, that's a really strong central theme and or, 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 you know, part of it. And I'm just like, I don't, on read book upon book upon book that has that and I don't feel awesome saying this and I don't feel like it's um, not important to know this as a part of history because that is very important but in terms of reading fiction it's not where my heart goes it really isn't so I think the where I'm going to change this how I could change this in the future is just to conti continue reading works by women and, and not be forced to read books, not feel that I need to read books from a particular list. And hopefully the flow of that energy will help me in terms of finding what I need there. Um, and I did find some awesome things this year along this line, along these lines, including the Reading Women Challenge, the both the year-long challenge and the monthly um, 
uh, the monthly readathon and the podcast for reading women. All of that was awesome. Honestly, if I'd found one thing this year in that realm of things, it it was that, and that was awesome enough for me. And actually, in addition to that, Elizabeth um, from Books and Pieces, her book club, The Lady Vaults, is also awesome in terms of science fiction and fantasy uh, by women. So both of those were huge finds in this realm of things. And I think I just, of course, like I read a lot by women, like it's pretty much half and half. Um, and um, so I'm not, I don't feel like I'm not reading enough women, but I'm just trying to figure out what's, what is the, what is the end goal here and how can I make it work and those kinds of things. So that was a bit, I, I feel really not great about that one not going well. And that one actually sort of goes a little hand in hand to my next one. And that is I challenged myself to read um, graphic novels by um, women. So along the same lines, either written or illustrated by women. So I did read, I think I have 10 here. And so these are the ones that I read. I will leave a full list of them down below. Um, unfortunately, not all of these images have the author and or artist. So I read Mer, which was a YA about mermaids. <laughs> uh, My Favorite Thing is Monsters by Emil Ferris. Monstrous, Volume 2 and 3. Ma uh, Black is the Color by Julie... I can't pronounce it. This is also about mermaids. <laughs> uh, Eartha, which is one of the ones that, although at the time I found it very disturbing, and I still find some of it, there's one image in it that I can't get out of my head, and it is very disturbing, but this one has stuck with me and stuck in my heart, like, and I really, I love the character of Eartha, but it's social commentary, which is not, it's not my thing, but it also, and the art was beautiful. So that one, oddly, ended up being one of my favorites. <laughs> Um, I also read the entire Midnight Secretary manga series, which I'm including here. Uh, Misty Circus, uh, Everywhere Antennas by Julie Delport, what else? and Sheets by Brenna Thum Thumbler. And I think that's the last one. Yeah, and so I, again, with this one, I found it, there were numerous challenges with this one, but I did read 10, and there's an additional two to three that I'm not confident in the gender of the author. I either couldn't find it, like it was either, and and I don't want, I don't feel, at some point I'm like, actually, you know, these are all authors that I confirmed, but I felt like, you know, if someone doesn't want to identify their gender, it doesn't, like, I don't, that doesn't need to happen so I can say yes or no that it fits some goal that I had. So there are several things that as I started working on this one made me uncomfortable, including that one. Um, but um, mostly that one, I just felt like, you know, I had to research a fair amount and I was like, and I'm not going to guess it based on someone's name um, or image, like, or picture. I'm not doing that. That's not appropriate. Um, and <laughs> so like, just full stop, that's not going to happen. And um, yeah, so I feel like for me, the, the side goal, like the, where this challenge came from, where this goal came from, is that I recognized how many graphic novels there are out there with female protagonists that are written by men. And I was like, there are tons, there are so many. But I'm like, actually, I would like to hear stories with female protagonists in graphic novels that are written by women. So that's why it ended up being a goal. But then after reading them, there were not, I didn't end up loving a lot of them. And there were a lot that I just felt like I just, it wasn't a good fit, and I, it mostly wasn't a good fit for me, um, and um, so it ended up, and some of them, either, they, I felt like for me, either they were too dark, <laughs> like black is the color was quite dark, <laughs> um, and uh, my favorite thing is monsters, it's very dark, um, or too light, like sheets and myrrh were both quite light, and I wasn't the target market for those there, I think YAs. And um, yeah, so it kind of ended up being feeling not great. So what I've decided to do next year is just to read more graphic novels full stop. I now have a tablet, so they are much easier for me to read. I get eight um, rentals from Hoopla every month. I occasionally will want to watch a movie, of course, because um, they have lots of awesome movies on there. But um, yeah, I'm just going to read more and just to have just to hope that that will end up finding stories and characters that I like more. So it was another one that was like, oh, I really wanted to just like, 
you know, so and although I completed this as a goal, I didn't feel like I ended up enjoying tons of works that I like. Did I enjoy stuff that I did? I take a chance on stuff? Did I just randomly scroll through Poopla and pick stuff? Sure. And, you know, sometimes that panned out and sometimes it didn't. It definitely made me find some publishers that were not the name, like the, the regular publishers. And on Hoopla, you can click the publisher. So if you find one that you like, like for me, I quite like, I think it's called Fantastic Fantagraphic. Um, and I think Eartha is one of their titles. And don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and because um, I read several titles of theirs this year, and it's very, they're all all over the place, like very different styles. But wow, really good. So um, and really enjoyable and really different and different kinds of techniques. And I just found it very engaging from an art perspective. So so, you know, it's like one of those things that like what I learned might not be or what I achieved may not be what I intended to achieve. However, I did still achieve something. I don't know. How do you feel about that kind of stuff? <laughs> Sometimes you don't know until you're in the project how something feels. And I think that happened to me several times here. So there's just two more to go. So here are the last two. Um, my second last one was I wanted to create some art inspired by books that I read. And I did do this. I did this during the manga readathon hosted by Laura. She had an art, uh, not a competition, an art, um, oh, like a, a, like a, oh my gosh, that's like, uh, who won was random, but it was uh, like a, like, oh my gosh, I am stumbling over my words. Art challenge? Maybe it's just challenge. An art challenge um, for people to do works inspired by the manga that they were reading during the readathon or any manga or do their own manga. So it was an art challenge and I submitted an entry for the challenge and I didn't win, but I did do it. And so I'm super excited that I did that. And I just, I did a montage, sort of like non-montage, but like a collection from the different, um, I think from Midnight Secretary and uh, Golden Kamui and um bat manga and i did like impressions like i just i did like copies like i didn't i didn't trace them copies but i just did them freehand of the different um different panels and so it was a lot of fun so thank you thank you so much to laura for hosting that challenge because i am really just super excited that i i I, I did it. I <laughs> it was very it was a lot of fun. I had so much fun during the manga readathon. It was one of the highlights of the year. And my last but not least challenge of the year was actually the one that fell off the I didn't I forgot to record about, and that was to read or reread all of the comics that I own, and I did it. There were only there were twelve, so I read three Wolverines. One oh these some of these are old, so I got to be careful. So three Wolverines, and then. Four TMNTs, which I think were my favorite. And then the rest are all X-Men. This one was really good. It was, well, it was, it's basically an art one. It has some great depictions of flames, like that, for serious. It just extraordinarily beautiful. And then some more X-Men. These are all random, none in order. Oh yeah, and then a Daredevil, really old Daredevil, and a Spider-Man. So I read all of those, and so I'm really happy about that. That was actually a big highlight too, because it, they're only about 30 pages. It doesn't take that long to read them. I got to revisit some stories um, from the past, and I was surprised at how much fun it was to do that one, and um, it just was a real highlight too. <laughs> Who knew? So overall, those are my goals. I would say I definitely achieved five out of the eight of the goals. And the other three, I did not achieve, but I did understand what I was trying to go for and have a better understanding of why that did or didn't work and what I can do in the future. So there we go. Very quickly, my stats for the year. <laughs> I did end up finishing 250 titles this year. That includes everything from short stories to mangas to novellas to novels to three of the Game of Thrones books. Like, it's all over the place in terms of length or style or format. Um, I read a lot on my tablet. I'm so glad that I got it. Getting my tablet this year was huge. It just made a huge difference for both reading graphic novels from Hoopla. I can read um, color 
um, books on um, from Overdrive. Like if there's a graphic novel available through Overdrive or a kid's book available through Overdrive, and can read it that way. And now it's also how I read stuff, um, eBooks from Scribd, um, which has also been a huge boon this year and well worth the fee. Um, the, it's a monthly subscription service. I'll leave a referral link down below if you would like to check it out. Um, so that those those two, the, my, my tablet and Scribd were huge this year. And so overall, oh yeah, so 250 titles, which ended up being 48,114 pages with an average page count per book of 195. So it's pretty short in terms of the page count per book, but I am very happy with this. I am nowhere near going to try and match that next year. <laughs> like if I do, great. If I don't, I'm not, I'm not worried about, like I, I read, it's a regular part of my life. I'm not worried about the number of pages and titles. So, which is why it's not part of my goals. But the projects I think I did pretty good at. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about those books, sci-fi fantasy and weird unwrappings and uh, book to film. But doing this video means I feel a little more centered on where I can go in the future. So there you go. Thank you for sticking with me with this really long reflection video. Let me know if you've done one. I would love to see it. Um, I have been really enjoying watching people's reflections and them setting their new goals. But for me, I need to wrap up last year first before I start the new one in terms of where I'm going to move forward. And I will do a 2019 goals video, but I haven't, I haven't decided on them yet my list is rather long, so I gotta pare down. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again in another video very soon.